Hey, good morning. Let's see. It's Monday, the 13th of April. Um, thought I'd start with a review of what we're, what I'm building here. Um, first, we talked about the bandpass filter. I started out using the one that Farhan had recommended, but I couldn't get it to work, so I went with the, um, the DIS, W8DIS recommended filter. Then, at an amplifier stage, from taken out of the bit U bit X uh, schematic, just a feedback amplifier that Farhan uses a lot. The diode ring mixer we've already discussed. The VFO comes up into the diode ring mixer, and then this is what we're going to talk about mostly today: uh, an IF amplifier followed by uh, a ceramic resonator filter followed by another IF amplifier. I have, I have all this on one board. And it's worked out pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to show you how, how that works. Now, there were some impedance matching issues between the uh, amplifiers and the, the uh, ceramic filter. I've kind of addressed them with L network filters. I'm not sure if I've addressed them completely adequately, but it seems to be working okay for now. This is one area for potential improvement. After these IF amplifier, the next thing I'm going to build is an AM diode detector. Then I'm going to have some AF amplification, and then off to speakers and headphones, and we should be in business. All right. I rearrange my papers here a bit. Show you what I built. All right. First, let me go down here. Look. Ta da! There it is. This is uh, the most recent uh, creation. And it's what I described before. So here is one IF amplifier, just a simple feedback amplifier using a single 2N3904. There is the ceramic filter from Murata. It is a 455 KC filter with a 6 dB pass band of 10 kilohertz. Quite wide, but really good for shortwave listening. And then here, is an identical uh, IF amplifier. And so, and then I, you can see I've constructed little L networks here. Here's one of them. Here's another. The objective of the L network is to, to make the high, relatively high impedance of the Murata filter appear more like 50 ohms and make the, the low impedance here, the 50 ohms or so that you have in these amplifiers look like about the 1500 ohms that, 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 that the Murata filter likes. I'll talk about the results in a minute. Now the way I built this was the first thing I did was I built the amplifier separately. I, I, I saved time because I knew they were going to be identical. So first I put down all the pads, glued them down. Then I went in and glued all the resistors. Each time I took a resistor out, I took out two. One, 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 one. So it, it made it quite efficient build for this this particular board then i put in all the little caps and finally i put in the transistors then i tested each of the amplifier stages so i took um, my signal generator and put 455 cases in here put a little uh, 47 ohm resistor across the output measured the input across a 47 ohm resistor, put the input on here. Measured the output across a 47 ohm resistor and measured it. And let me show you what I got. It was this was this was this was uh, kind of kind of fun. So I was testing the first amplifier, and I again I, I, I described the the circumstances. So and I measured 82 millivolts RMS going in, coming out the other end 461 millivolts RMS. Um, now, one thing you notice that when you do this, you've got to be careful because you could easily cause the amplifier to flat top and you're not getting then a true reading of its uh, total amplification capability. So I had to back off on the, the amount of input signal I was getting so that the output signal wasn't, wasn't flat topping. Anyway, the, those were the, uh, the signals I got. And when you do the math, it comes out to 15 dB, which I think which was, which was the target. Then I repeated the same test separately with amplifier number two and got, again, 15 dB. So I knew both stages 
uh, of amplification were, were working properly. At that point, I took the, uh, the Murata filter and glued it to the board. And at first I tried to see how it would work, just working straight from amplifier, filter, amplifier, to see how it would work. And let me see if I can find the page where I did what I did, hold on. Ah, yes, here it is, look. This is my, my crude sweep, as I call it. So what I would do is just take the scope. I've done this many times with different filters. And just, this is the frequency coming out of the signal generator. And then I would record here the, uh, the voltage reading, the RMS reading on my scope at the, at the other end. Um, so you could see it peaks up, it peaks up, but in the peak area around 455, whoop, 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 a lot of ripple. You see ripple? And then I just drew a, drew a crude, very <laughs> crude diagram, but indicating that the thing was filtering. The pass man is pretty much where you wanted it to be, but with a lot of ripple there. And, you know, normally with, with filters, especially crystal filters, if you see ripple in the pass band, the, uh, the culprit is normally the, um, the impedance at either, either end of the filter. So at that point, I decided to put in the L networks. I had used L networks on a couple of the filters in my HRO uh, receiver, HRO dial receiver. I found that one of the problems working with 455 KCs as your IF is that it's difficult to build transformers at that low frequency. You end up starting to put a lot of turns on those toroids and it gets to be a real pain. So the L network was, was better. So I just took the L networks that I had designed for the HRO receivers, 455 KC filters, and I put them into this one. And here is roughly what I did in terms of the L network. Uh, 16 turns on an FT 37-43 and a thousand PF. So Here's coming from the amplifier, and then here's going to the filter, okay? And I put one of those on either end of the 455KC filter, and then I did another crude, and I emphasize crude, scan. Again, skipping two KCs all the way through the pass band. And I think you could see here, you see that? There's some bumps, but less of a dramatic ripple. So I think the ripple has been taken care of largely. I have found that a bit of ripple in the pass band is not really noticeable. Purists who are going through for looking for really high the hi-fi experience may disagree with me, but that, that, that's what I found. Anyway, that's what we've been working on. And then this morning when I got up, I decided to test the whole shebang. All right. So this whole board the question is, signal coming in here, coming out over here. How much gain is there through the whole thing? Because you're going to consider the gain from this amplifier, the losses in this amplifier, and the gain, I think the losses in this filter, and the gain from this amplifier all together. So I, I just set it up similar to the way I did with the individual amplifiers. And I put 15 millivolts in here. And I measured it by taking measurement across a 57 ohm, 47 ohm resistor apart from the circuit. So I took, took the signal generator, got it set so there was 15 millivolts across 47 ohms, put it in there. And then I took the 47 ohm resistor out, obviously. And then at this end, I put a 47 ohm resistor here and just, it's hard to see through the phone. There you go. And then just measured at this point. So input, 15 millivolts in, 385 millivolts out, um, a gain of about 27 dB at 455 KC, which is about what you'd expect. You got a 15, 15 dB here, 15 dB here, some losses in the filter, some losses, some coupling losses and things like that, about 27 dB, which is pretty much what I was expected, expecting. So I think uh, we've got a good, a good little board here. I'm, I'm starting to put the boards on the uh, the chassis. You can see them here. I got one of the sidecars on there. And uh, so this is the, uh, 
the bandpass filter. This is the RF amplifier and the uh, the mixer. I'll put the IF board over here, and back in here, of course, we have the VFO that started all this stuff, and there's the magnificent um, variable capacitor and the heroic Eddie Stone Blitz coil. Anyway, coming together, having fun. I'm trying to now start to worry about what am I going to do when I get this thing finished. I'm going to have to think of another project. Stay in the shank. Stay safe. Flatten the curve. 7-3.